is because we sometimes don't take the time out to do it. Meditation is the key to seeing in the unseen. Meditation is actually not a worldly thing. It's a kingdom thing. When we meditate, we are erasing everything in our mind to see nothing but the goodness of Jesus. So it's important that every day from this day that we continually take time out just to meditate on his goodness. And if you know he's been good to you, give God a hand clap of praise and bless him with your voice to know that he is only the good God that he is in our lives. We bless you, God. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for this day, Lord God. We pray that as this word comes forth, may you open up our eyes to see you clearly to what you have in store for us this day, that as we walk out these doors, we will walk out even stronger than when we came in today, Father. We thank you, Father, for what you're getting ready to do in this house, Lord, continuously, Lord God, in our lives, personally, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody have your seats. Ah, ah. Are y'all ready for the word today? So this word is going to be good today. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Listen. We've been talking about my tribe for the rest of this whole month. And today we're going to end this series because next month, going into October, we'll be going into something different. But today I want to talk about ending this series of my tribe. <laughs> Maybe a little bit different than what you think I'm going to talk about. We've been talking about inheritance. We've been talking about us getting together as community. We've been talking about all these different things things dealing with others. But today we're going to talk about dealing with ourselves. Dealing with ourselves is the most important thing before we can be able to deal with others. Amen? So what we're going to talk about today is going to be good. We're going to be coming from in the beginning of Acts in the book of Acts, chapter 22, media team, the book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 6, and <laughs> this is going to be good today. I want you guys to think when, I'm, when we're talking about this and the Lord is speaking, I want us to meditate on us personally. See, us personally, okay? This is what the Scripture says. It says, and it came to pass that as I made my journey. Now, here, let me stop. So, here we are in the book of Acts. This is when Saul... Not the Saul in the Old Testament, but the Saul that be before he became Paul, Saul, was persecuting the church. Okay? So I wanted to give you that so you know where we're coming from. 
It says, And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, when thou persecutest, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. You didn't go continue the scriptures. Click the slides, please. So they can see that. So this is what we're seeing. And I'm going to start from the beginning. And it came to pass. Oh, you can go back now. Go back to the first slide, please. Okay, we're going to, the media team's having issues right now, so we'll continue. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. Now, in this particular scripture, he says he was sh shown. Let me give you the topic today. It's called clear picture. We're going to have a clear picture of who we really are today. Look at this. It says suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell onto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, look, when I looked at this, we all know that if something shines on you, you won't move unless there's pressure. Follow me. It says he was shown a light round about him, and he fell. Can I show y'all something? This is how we research the word. Says this. He said, and answer who thou art, Lord. And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, who persecuted this. And they that were with me saw. Now look at this. They that were with saw, saw the light that caused Saul to fall. How come the other ones didn't? You catching this? What light was this? This wasn't no ordinary light. If anything shines on you and causes you to move, see, Paul realized the light that shone around about him was not just a light. It was a hand. I'm trying. Hope I'm not going too deep. The hand in the light caused him to fall. Because the other ones saw the light, but they didn't budge. Because who was in the light? Who was he talking to? One individual. Because the scripture says that they saw the light, but they could not hear what was being said. So that means the one that was in the light came to Saul and not just had shined on him, but touched him. Caused him to fall and said, Lord, who are you? How is it that Saul even knew to call him Lord? See, sometimes there are things we... 
There's sometimes there's things in us we don't realize that knows more than we think. Because we are spiritual beings. Only your inner being would know who was there. He was the one who persecuted the church. He was the one that would kill off the priests and the Christians and everyone who called themselves believers. But Jesus still came to him. And said, why are you persecuting me, man? Wait, so you mean to tell me all these other rascals that were with Saul did not get the attention of Jesus? Why is it that Jesus chose only Saul and not the whole group that was with him? Let me show you something. Paul, or I should say Saul then, was a very wise man. He actually had spent his time with God, but turned on God to persecute the people who wanted to serve God. So Jesus said, let me get this man back in line. That tells me there are people out here that calls themselves or call themselves Christians or believers or saints, and then they persecute you. Listen, y'all. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good. I ain't got there yet. I'm trying to slow it down. The thing about understanding Paul's situation is that Jesus said, listen, y'all, I want you to understand no matter what you go through, who you come in contact with, whoever talks about you, no matter what, the light of Christ in you is, should be causing them to move. Let me say that again. Anybody who comes to you to try to discourage you, falsely accuse you, tell you things that are not of you, don't do nothing. Because you must allow the light of Christ through you to cause them to move. That's why he said we're not supposed to fight battles. He fights our battles for us. How so? Through the lights. See, there's something that Pam said earlier, and I'm going to get there. I was just like, wait, how's she into my message right now? Look at this. He says, and that they were with him, saw the light indeed, and were afraid, but were heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, what shall I do? Now look at this. One we could not understand how is that Saul knew to call Jesus Lord, but then he also asked him, what shall I do? Why is he asking him this question? Because it just appeared to him. See, when God appears to us, there's a reason There's no time you will ever see the presence of God in your life and he does not tell you to do something. Every single time he comes to you, best believe there's something he wants you to do. Saul knew it. Now, how did he know that, y'all? He was killing off the church. It's because he understood if anybody walks with Christ, they are strong, and they are not to be messed with. That's why he was like, you know what? Let me kill off these rascals that call themselves Christians. You ain't no Christian. You're going to die today. You believe in that man? Uh. And this man had the nerve to do that when he knew all the law. This man knew the word more than the Pharisees did. This is why he was able to write the books that he wrote in the New Testament. 
Now, you're probably asking me, well, what has this got to do with seeing a clear picture? Easy. See, Paul, or to say Saul at the moment, didn't know who he truly was until he was blinded. The same light that caused him to move was the same light that caused him to not see. The same light that caused him not to see is the same light that caused him to have to depend on Jesus. Look, when you get into a situation you seem like you can't see, the key is you need to depend on God. Because if you ain't depending on him, you will continually walk blinded. And every decision you make will not be the right one. Look at this, y'all. Leads me into my three points. First point. Now, we know that Paul was persecuting the church. Right? Can I read something to you? I don't have it up here, but I'm going to read it to you. First point is, don't lose your reward by not letting the light of Christ shine when you're persecuted. Let me read that again. And then I'm going to show you the scripture. Don't lose your reward by not letting the light of Christ shine when you're persecuted persecuted. The scripture Matthew 5 11 and 12 says this. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Here it is. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Anybody who walks up to you or in the where and tries to persecute you, the best thing to do is to smile. What do we do sometimes, y'all? We go off. <laughs> Who you think you talking to? Who are you trying to judge? If y'all only told the dirt about you, blah, 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 blah. But what, what, what just what happened? We lost access to our reward. Because what the enemy wants to do is make sure you do not get what belongs to you. And he will use anything and anyone to try to trick you up. He is a deceiver. So if he's a deceiver, we should know his deceptive ways. And one of them is when someone tries to falsely accuse you. Another one is, is when they try to judge you. Oh, I'm about to get into somebody's pants right now. Sorry, not in the meaning like that way. But spanking butts. Look at this. And I'm going to say it. Because I can. I'm a man of God. I'm standing right here. And I'm wearing earrings. Is that a problem? Let me show you something. If anyone comes to me and say, why are you wearing earrings preaching the word of God? The first thing I would say to them is, why is it bothering you? I'm going somewhere, y'all. No one 
can never answer that question. Because what I recall is God does not look at the outward appearance. He looks at the, the heart. So why do people judge us so quickly of our outside? Let me show you something. The reason why they're judging us so much on the outside is because they see you doing something they wish they could. But they're so bounded and not feeling like they're free that they're stuck in their own ways. I, I find it interesting. People will always try to prove you wrong with Scripture. You know, that's what Saul was doing with the people. That's how he was per persecuting the people, right? People would try to use the word to try to trick you up to make you look like you're a sinner. And they're not. But long and behold, wrong, this doesn't make me a sinner. I was born a sinner. And because I know I was born a sinner, I know my Redeemer is the only one who keeps me. So I would never judge another one based off of what they look like. Anybody judges you is because they don't realize they're a sinner themselves. They're walking with their head up, thinking they're all that, and not realizing God sees you as a wretched, ratchet piece of dirt that you are that can only be cleansed up by him. If we get to understand what it means to see clearly, we will see the person in front of us as they truly are, not based off of what they look like. Look at this, y'all. Ah! Which leads me to my second point. Sight. Oh, now we're about to get funny. Ready for this point? Seeing Jesus and telling others that you have seen Jesus is not always enough for others to believe. Seeing Jesus for yourself and telling others that you've seen Jesus is not always enough for others to believe. Y'all want to see scripture on that one? Mark 16, 11. <laughs> This is what it says. And they, when they heard, had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Who were we talking about? Mary Magdalene was the one who saw Jesus. After he came out the tomb, she kept spreading the word that she saw him, but no one wanted to believe. No matter what you do, where you go, what you say, if a person will not believe the words that are coming out of your mouth, guess what you do? Do what Jesus did when he left that town. Peace out. Wish you luck. Why do you think Jesus couldn't do miracles all the time? Please, when you cannot do miracles, y'all, don't think that is something wrong with you. It's never nothing wrong with you. Especially when your heart is right. It's the person who's trying to. So if no one wants to get healed, that's not your fault. If no one wants to be prayed for, that's not your fault. Can you hear me? Watch this. John 1.32 says this. And John bare record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Listen, when Jesus was being baptized by John, 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 John 
was the only one who could see the Holy Spirit. Do y'all know how many people was there when Jesus was being baptized? And not one of them could see what was hovering down on Christ. But only John did. What is you saying? Not everything you do, everybody will believe in it. I'm going to say it again. Not everything you do, everybody will believe in it. Those are the ones you need to run away from. Look at this scripture, John 1, 14. It says, and the word was made flesh. Oh, I love this one. And dwelt among us, and we, here we go, beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Listen, y'all. Listen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Please, y'all. Please. I'm begging you. Discern. When the word is being spoken. Not everybody who speaks the word is speaking the word of God. I'm going to say that again. People are so conniving and sneaky and, and they want to have hidden agendas that they will speak word, but it's not the word. Because Christ is not one to try to, to manipulate anybody. He tells you the truth to lead you to truth so you can walk in truth. So how is the word made flesh? It's only made flesh through truth. Listen to this. If you are persecuting another brother, you're persecuting the word. I need to say that again, because I don't think you got it. When you persecute another, you're persecuting the word. Because the word was what? Made flesh. You catching that? Let me help you out. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was now, let's skip some verses. And they said, let us make man in our. Did you get that? So the word that was there decided to put on flesh through us. The deity of the word became flesh when he became Jesus. I don't think y'all caught that. Because when we were born, we weren't born with all that power. Huh? But we had access to it after the divinely one came in the flesh. I hope I'm not going too deep, y'all. Almost done. Last point here. We went from persecution to being able to see to being able to hear. This is what it is. It says, not everyone can hear what you hear when it's directed to you. Let me say that again. Not everyone can hear what you hear when it's directed to you. When you sit and listen to a preacher or whoever who's speaking, you will say, man, how does he know my business? Well, that word or the word is speaking to you, and no one knows what he's speaking to you because it's for you. That's why when Jesus approached Saul, the other ones couldn't hear what Saul was being said to by Jesus because the word was directly for him. Never despise what other people are hearing. Let me say that. If I get a word from the Lord 
and the Lord tells me something about me that I know is confirmation. And another one comes to me and tells me a word that does not in line with that confirmation. I tell you, you did not hear what I heard. So you must continuously walk in what you heard from the Lord. Don't let no one tell you what to do outside of what the Lord has already told you to do. Scripture. Luke 19, 47, 48 says this. And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. When you get into your room, to hear what God has to say to you, no one will be able to find you. Let me explain that. It's only in the shadow of the wings of the Almighty that you're embraced from the enemy. So when you're in the presence of God and someone seeks to try to do harm to you, they can't find you. Oh, look at this, y'all. I'm just keeping this short and sweet as much as I can. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Look at this. This is the last one. <laughs> and I'm going to say it. Beware of the critical spirit. Beware of a critical spirit. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. And this is it. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Now, I'm going to stop right there. If anyone says anything to you, that causes you to shift in the wrong direction. <laughs> Think about what was just said. Because if they're judging you, they just took away. Now, you can rejoice on this one, y'all. Because when I found this out, I was like, thank you, Father. Every one of us have judgment. But as soon as one judge you, a part of that judgment has disappeared. You didn't know that, did you? Listen. When someone judges you, this is why, and I'm going to show you, judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. What they judged you with, and you may have been guilty, because they judged you, you're no longer guilty. They become the guilty one of that which they judged you with. This is why we are not to judge others. Because as soon as we're judging people, we're taking on their judgments. We don't want that. Look at this. It says, and with, and with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. Uh-uh. Not in this house. Not nobody in this house is going to be judging people. We are going to love the people. Amen? Amen. Look at this. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider if not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. I love the word because it says this, thou hypocrite. You hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thy see clearly to cast out the mouth out of thy brother's eye. Now, what is he saying here? Did you know? Now, do, have y'all read it to people who are not saved? 
and says, I don't like Christians because they're hypocrites. <laughs> don't you know they have a right to say that? Because they see the hypocrisy from the people that cause themselves Christians. How are we to get those people saved if we act like them? Catch it? One, we don't do the saving, so just so y'all know. We don't save people. Jesus saved people. We bring people to Jesus to be saved. But if they don't want to receive the salvation, we keep it moving. So we never judge a person on their lifestyle. Because one thing I realize, y'all, as I end this, as soon as you open up your mouth to judge a sinner that's living in sin and know they're living in sin, best believe you'll find yourself in that same sin. It hurts, but it's right. So I need you guys to understand today is the day that we realize, you know what? All this time I've been judging people. And you, know what? you want to know how you've been judging people, y'all? And we're never going to do it again. This is how easy it is to judge someone. You're driving in your car. You're driving down the street. And you see a person walking, maybe homeless, maybe not. And the first thing to come out of your mouth is, that person ain't homeless. They're faking. Did you catch that? Just that quick. It's an innocent thing you're saying, but it's not. Every person we see, we should never judge by what we see. We should be led by the Spirit. Because just so y'all know, there are people out there who do scam. They do scam. But how do you know that? How do you know when someone's scamming you easily? By the Spirit. We as the people of God must learn how to hone in on who we are in that sense. To talk to whom we need to talk to in order to reach them. Not by this. Not by this. But by this.